and you'll have to tell me I forgot to ask you last class if you guys I know some of you guys have said you haven't seen this uh, any much of probability at all and then some of you guys have seen probability before um, so you'll have to tell me if this particular lesson and on is um, uh, if you've seen it before or if it's new to you guys um, so compound probability is uh, basically if you combine two or more events so like the probability that this or that occurs so combines two or more events and there's going to be two types we're going to sp spend most of the class talking about one type and then start on the other type and then continue on into uh, Friday so your two or more events using the word and I'll put it into quotation marks here and to link the two events. So like the probability of uh, drawing a, a king and a club. Okay, so and or two events where it's linked by the word or. Okay, so we're gonna first look at the or situations and the or situations are the same as the union symbol that we talked about. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about notation all throughout as well. Okay, so regarding the or situations, there's two types. Okay, so I'll just put or here. So when we see the word, uh, you know, what's the probability of this or that occurring, um, there, there's going to be a decision that has to be made. And that decision is, can these two events occur simultaneously at the same time, or are they non-overlapping and they can't occur at the same time? Okay, so mutually exclusive, which you guys can abbreviate as ME is I want you guys to visualize like um, a Venn diagram, but there's no overlap that occurs. Like, so basically two circles and there is no instance in which both uh, events occur at the same time. Okay, so two or more events. That cannot occur at the same time. And uh, we will we'll say there's no common outcomes. Okay, but when we visualize a or situation in which there is overlap that occurs, we're in a picture of Venn diagram where it's possible for the two uh, events to intersect. Okay, so it has at least one common outcome. So it has at least one common outcome. Okay, we're gonna first talk about mutually exclusive or, or the event that um, two, two uh, events occur, but they can't overlap. And the finding the probability of that should be easy. We just take the probability of one and add it to the probability of the other. So here on example number one, you guys see a, a, um, a survey that was given to, maybe it shouldn't have been just girls, but girls' uh, favorite department stores. And um, if you look over on the right, it gives you guys the probability of each one of those being selected. Surprisingly, all of them survived the pandemic, right? All of those are still open. Yeah, I know I'm surprised it's like not Sears there, which closed down. Um, so let's say that you take a look at that and, um, can I have you guys type into the chat? If you totaled all of these um, values together, what do you guys get? You total all those values together and, and feel free to have a calculator out for this, um, these notes as well. Good, you get one, which is equivalent to 100%, right? So that means that, um, you know, when I create the poll questions for you guys, I have the option of making it like a checklist or making it multiple choice. And do you guys remember when I gave you the social media, favorite social media platform one, and I mistakenly made it multiple choice, so you only could choose one. So for example, um, like some of you guys are like, oh, I use uh, TikTok and Snapchat, but you could only pick one. And so that's something that is like mutually exclusive because when I'm looking at the results, I know that like Annika didn't choose both of them at the same time, that there's no overlap. When I'm looking at Snapchat, I know everyone is like this, who selected Snapchat that, that they didn't select anything else. Okay, so that's something that's mutually exclusive. So some for this survey, it looks like it was like that, where whoever chose Macy's did not so also have the chance to select sex. Um, versus if the survey was open and you guys look over on the right and you saw 
like it's over 100%, then there's uh, some overlap that occurs. Okay, so that's one thing you guys can check for. But what I'm going to have you guys do is highlight or underline the word or. Okay, when you assess the, the type of problem, look for the keyword or and. So we're going to first uh, take a look, and this says or. So we know that this is going to be either mutually exclusive or overlapping. We just determined that this is mutually exclusive. Okay, that one person who selected Macy's cannot then select um, Saks Fifth Avenue. So the way that we, the correct notation for an or is uh, the symbol, and I'll have you guys practice writing the symbol, but it's Macy's. And then the union symbol is the or symbol. So when you see this in notation, and sometimes they don't have the sentence, but they just have the notation, you would have to know it's actually finding the probability that um, someone selected Macy's or uh, and we can write the word or underneath that union for the first time or Nordstrom. So we're going to find the probability of each and add them together. So in this case, uh, what do you guys come up with when you, what's the total? And, and keep note that they did give you guys the probability values. So you didn't have to actually calculate the probability of each individually. So good, so 0. 0.45, 45%, very nice. Okay, so the next question, um, find the probability that a girl's favorite store is not JCPenney. So looking at the table on the right, what do you guys think the answer is? 90, very good. So can you guys write this notation though, just so you recognize it if it's, if it's presented to you guys as just notation? If, if you see an apostrophe after like JC with a like apostrophe like that, or you guys see probability of JC, but with a bar on top of it, that's all complements, which means not. So not JCPenney uh, on either one of those. And it could be written like that. And so one way of calculating it is just adding all the ones that are not JCPenney or taking the total, which is one and subtracting out um, JCPenney, which is 0.9. You, I look at your test, you guys are going to have a question like number two on it. And I wanted to, you guys to have a visualization of it. It's, it's a little bit easier to visualize this. When rolling two dice, what is the probability that your sum will be four or five? So again, underline or highlight the word or. Okay, once you guys determine it's an or situation, you have to determine if it's uh, mutually exclusive or if it's overlapping. Okay, when you roll two dice, is it possible for you to roll a four and a five at the same time for the sum? For this, not for the singular one, but for the sum. Can the sum be both four and five at the same time? You know, like when you roll it and then you add the two dice together, can it be both four and five at the same time, like the sum? It's not possible for the sum. I think, I think, um, when I asked that question initially to the other classes, they confused it with, can you roll A4 and A5? But this is saying that the sum is uh, four and five, and that's not possible. So it's either four or it's five or it's something else, but uh, four or five, this is mutually exclusive. There's no overlap. So what does it mean? Like if you guys roll, um, and we're going to assume because someone said, like, what about those funky dice that you guys have that has like more than six numbers on it? So in these probability questions, you're going to assume a six, six number die. Um, so here, uh, the, if you were to roll the first die, these are the possibilities. If you roll the second one, these are the possibilities. So what, how many total possible number of outcomes do you guys have? 36, six times six, right? And then, so let's come up with the, the different sums that you would get. So for example, if I were to roll a one and a one, my sum is gonna be two. So we're gonna list out all the sums and there should be a pattern that emerges. Go ahead and fill it out for me. And if it helps you guys, um, when you do these types of questions eventually, feel free to create a table or maybe just have this memorized if you guys um, are good with just the pattern recognition. But look at the diagonals. Someone was like, oh, di diagonals are all the same. Okay. 
And then if you guys can practice writing the symbol as well, that would be good. Like, how do I write probability of four or five, like using the symbol above? It's just to get you guys to practice because um, I noticed that the symbol aspect of it is part of the difficulties of this chapter is just uh, confusing ors and and problems and then the symbols for it. Okay, so upwards facing U for a union of four and five is or problems. So we're going to calculate the probability of four and then add it to the probability of five. Okay, so of the 36 possibilities, how many fours do you guys have? Or what's the probability of four? Yeah, if you guys count the number of times four occurs uh, as a sum, there's three possibilities out of the 36. Okay, how many, what's the probability of five? Yes, four out of 36, good. And then um, go ahead and total it up together. And then you guys should see that it is seven out of 36. If it can't be reduced, we would reduce, but we'll leave that as that. Seven out of 36. Okay, how many of you guys uh, did not grow up, and, and you guys can direct message me so I know this, um, did not grow up playing cards or you, you're just like unfamiliar with a deck of cards? And it's okay if you guys, if you guys have never, we'll just kind of walk through it, but it is helpful to know um, what's in a standard deck of cards. Does anyone not played cards or don't know like what's in a, a standard deck of cards? Okay. Okay, stop me if, if, if you guys have questions like, like they might appear like basic questions, but if you haven't played with cards, it's kind of hard to, to picture some of these instances. So over on the right, I know it's super tiny um, and feel free to get a deck of cards from like Dollar Tree and, and, and look at it, like organize it. Um, but when you do, uh, you'll see that these are uh, organized by uh, what we call suits. Okay, suits are, are the shapes. Like you have a club, which looks like a, a three leaf clover or four leaf, three, three leaf clover. And then um, spades, which looks like, like a leaf, yeah. And then hearts are obvious and then diamonds are obvious. So there's four different things that we call suits. So if you guys wanna call, uh, write the word suits here, these are called suits. And then amongst the suits, you guys have a list of, of values that go below that. Um, the A symbol stands for ace, which when you're playing a card game, like say for 21, it represents the number 11, or it could represent the number one. That's, a, that's why it's written above two. And then you see these are number cards all the way down to 10. Does anyone remember what these are called um, down here? Jack, Queen, King, they're called what type of cards? Face cards, because they have a face on it. Okay, so these are face cards. Okay, so if you guys count the number of clubs you have, you have 13 clubs, you have 13 spades, 13 hearts, and then 13 diamonds. Um, if you take 13 times four, how many cards are there in total? Yeah, so if you guys can write, so this is gonna be a big, uh, an important number. The total number of cards in a deck of cards is 52 cards. Okay, it's gonna be also, useful to know how many of each number you guys have or how many of each face cards you guys have. So how many of each do you guys have? Like how many fours do you guys have? How many fives do you have? How many jacks? Yeah, you just count across, right? You have four of each. So there's four of each, four of each number or face cards. Okay, all useful to know. Okay, so the four, the 13, we're gonna talk about those. Oh, and then how many colors are there? Two, okay, there's two colors. It's either colors are, um, colors are red or black. So if you divide 54 by two, what do you guys have? 52 by two. Twenty-six of each card. Sorry, of each color. 
Okay, so that helps us a little bit in answering some of these card questions. Okay, I'll probably end up doing this activity as a review also with cards. Um, okay, what's the probability of picking a queen or an ace from a deck of cards? So first thing you guys do, highlight four. Okay, second thing you guys do is, is it possible when I draw a card for it to be both a queen and an ace at the same time? No, so this is mutually exclusive. And so let's write mutually exclusive down. And then the probability that it's a queen or an ace is written like that. So we take the probability of queen and add the probability of ace. So of the 52 cards that you guys have, how many of them are queens? Four, right? And then how many of them are aces? Four. So it's simply the sum of the two. So you guys get eight out of 52, which when you reduce or divide by four, you get two out of 13 is the probability. So you'll see the 13 number a lot because um, as you guys reduce, you'll see that that's true. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and move on to um, what happens if there is overlap. Okay, when two, two events occur and then there is overlap that occurs. All right, so for the first part, um, I'm gonna ignore the formula for now because I think it, it makes more sense if I explain it to you guys in a Venn diagram. So let's say this was random, but it's like find the prob probability that a person will drink both and it doesn't say both what. Um, so we're gonna uh, just put a situation here. So let's say um, they did a survey and the question was about drinks, so tea and coffee. Okay, A is tea and B is coffee. There's two questions. Okay, so one, you asked the survey of office workers and I, I think this was the confusion. I went back and checked fifth period's classwork and there were mistakes on the, the problem because when I asked what was the total number of surveys, or sorry, of, of workers who were surveyed, this is what I saw a lot of kids do. They added these guys together and they said that was the total number. What do you guys think this 83 represents over here? Did, were they surveyed? What was that, Lena? No responses in the survey. Oh, that's interesting for, but, but what if the box said survey of, what do you guys think the 83 people represent? Like, so what if I asked that question? What are some, what are possible answers, right? They can say tea, coffee, both, or neither or neither, right? So it's um, exactly, so they don't like coffee or tea. Um, so they would still be considered as part of the total. So you wanna add all these values and that value as the total number of people surveyed. So that's gonna affect our probability. Um, so if you guys can total it up, let me know. What do you guys get? What's the total number of people surveyed? That's right, 151. Okay, so go ahead and put 151 for classwork for today, that's what I noticed the mistake was on, was figuring out what the total is. Total is the sum of everyone, including all the people on the outside. Okay, so then um, let's answer question four first. Find the probability that a person will drink both. So the symbol for both, we haven't talked about that yet, is like if it's tea and coffee, do you guys remember when I was talking about the word and and the, the letter N? has like an upside down U, you can kind of envision like an upside down U there. So and means the, the intersection of A and B. Okay, so that symbol is A and B. What number represents A and B? Like people who selected both tea and coffee. 12. So it's, it's the middle, the intersection, and this is and right here. Okay, so 12 out of 151 selected both. Okay, so now let's talk about like, well, how does that affect the or situation? 
So when it says find the probability of A or B, and this time it's not mutually exclusive, there's clearly an overlap. There's people who, who like both. So I can't simply just look, I can't simply just take the probability of A plus the probability of B and then just be done. What we have to do is make an adjustment for it. So let's first talk about probability of A. So when I, uh, this is where the confusion comes. So when, when I'm calculating the probability of A, it's everyone that selected T. What is that number, you guys? What do you think everyone that selected T, what number is that? Yeah, so some people think it's just 31, but it's actually everyone that's in circle A, which is 31 plus 12, so 43. So we would say 43 out of the 151 likes T, okay? What is the probability that someone likes coffee or B? Okay, 37. So if you guys can write 37 out of 151 and, and look up at um, your Zoom screen for a minute and look at what my tracing does. Okay, guys, so when I calculated the A, the total number of people that selected T, I added 31 and 12, right? For B, I added 25 and 12. What did I count twice? Do you guys see how I overcounted by 12? The total number of people who selected A or B, I counted 12 twice. So if I'm calculating it based off of a Venn diagram like I did here, the probability of A includes 12, and so does the probability of B, it includes 12 again. So the formula that you guys see above, it makes the adjustment by subtracting out one of those 12s. So A and B, so subtracting out A and B. And we just determined A and B above is 12 out of 151. So this occurs whenever there's any sort of overlap that occurs. And then if you guys add and subtract 12, you get 68 out of 151. Now, someone in the last class, I think at the very start, when she saw that question, she just went straight to this. And can you guys tell me if, if this would have resulted in the same answer. She just looked at the Venn diagram and answered this question as A or B. So she just added these three numbers together. Would that get you guys the same result and so putting it over 151? What do you guys think? If you just added these three numbers, if you guys can add it real quick, do you guys get that? Do you guys, do you guys get 68 out of 151? Yes. Okay. So this is kind of like the long way of doing it, where if you're looking at a Venn diagram, you add these two, this, these two, then you add these two, then you subtract out one of those. But that's where that formula comes from. And it's useful for like the next example that we're about to do. Okay, within a Venn diagram though, you can just simply go straight to counting these as individual sections and then adding them together and then coming up with that 61 over 151. So this is the answer to four and five. Okay, so now where would this formula come in? Because it, it's obviously easier when I'm looking at Venn, Venn diagram just to add those three numbers together. But take a look at the next question. Find the probability of picking a king or a club. So can we highlight the or here? So we know this is going to be a um, an or question. The next question is, so king or a club. The question is, can is there overlap that occurs? So when I draw a card, is it possible for it to be both a king and a club at the same time? Yes, it's possible, right? Yeah, so this is, instead of mutually exclusive, it's overlap. Okay, so with overlap, the formula is figure out what the probability is for kings, for clubs, and then subtract out the overlap. So king and club. So let's start with the kings. How many kings are there in a deck of cards? Four out of 52. Good. Okay, how many clubs are there, you guys? 13. 13 of each. And um, Mia, I'll show you in just a minute with the, with the overlap. So there's 13 that are clubs. And then actually to answer Mia's question, why is there an overlap? Okay, let's take a look at the cards over here. 
if you guys look at the total number of kings you have, and I said four, there's four kings going in this direction. And then the, the other one was clubs. So clubs go in this direction. How many overlap? One, where there's a, 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 a king of clubs. Okay, so again, there's the kings, there's four of them. There's 13 clubs, and there's exactly one card that is both a king and a club, or a king of clubs. Uh, Mia, does that make sense for that? Okay. Yeah, I think that's what makes it hard is it's just if you're not too familiar with the, the standard deck of cards, it's confusing in that way. So yeah, so each one of the numbers and face cards has uh, one of each shape or suit. Okay, so then when you guys add those together, subtract it 16 over 52, which reduces by four, so four over 13. Okay, let's see what, what happens if it's not cards and it's a table of values. So in the next question, find the probability of picking a female or a person from Florida out of the committee members. So I'm going to abbreviate, they both happen to be Fs, um, so I'm going to abbreviate um, female as F and then Florida as L, the second letter in the word, L and F. Okay, and this is an or situation. And then looking at the table, is it possible for someone on the committee to be both female and from Florida? Yes, so that's where the overlap occurs. So this is an or with an overlap. Okay, so if they're asking me for probability of female or Florida, then I'm gonna, and I recognize that there's overlap, I'm gonna add the individual probability and subtract out the overlap. Okay, in order for me to calculate all of this, I'm gonna need to know totals. So can I have you guys find out the total number of people in the committee and, um, and then also the subtotals of like how many females there are, how many Florida, if you guys can go ahead and do that. You guys are right, 31 is the total. And you know you can get that by doing subtotals as well. Um, the subtotal of females, subtotal of males, and then adding across, you get 31. You can also find the total number of uh, people for Florida, Alabama, and Georgia, and then adding that should also add up to 31. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the calculation. What's the? How do you guys calculate the probability that the uh, that the person selected is female? What out of what is the is that probability? Yeah, good, 21 out of 31. There's 21 females in total out of 31 people. Um, how many people are from Florida? Okay, subtotal of Florida is 12. So 12 out of 31. And what do you guys think? What is the, um, what's the overlap? Eight. So we have to subtract out the eight because we actually technically added the eight twice. So you guys can see that if I if I circle. So if you guys uh, look at 21, it came from this. If you looked at 12, it came from this. So notice that I circled eight twice. And so that's why there's an adjustment and you have to subtract out that eight. And so the answer um, for this is 25 over 31. Okay, so the overlap ones, just be careful. You get, the formula is just adjusting for subtracting out the, the counting twice of uh, a subcategory. All right, guys, we're gonna skip over these next few problems. And we're gonna wrap up with just a few other problems on independent versus dependent and then finish the lesson the next day. Um, so if you guys can flip to page 20, we're almost done here. Okay, so the other problems that we just saw were all, um, were all, uh, what word was in between each one? 
or okay so now uh, the discussion today and into the next uh, lesson we're only going to do independent events today is what happens if it's and like two events are occurring occurring at once okay so this is um and problems and with just like or we have to discuss like okay is it possible for both to occur at the same time or um does the event of one thing occurring affect the other occurring okay so that's going to depend on whether it's independent of each other so if i flip a coin let's say my experiment is flipping a coin and and rolling a die does rolling the die affect the coin toss at all or does the coin toss affect the die so that that's something called independent like they're independent of each other also independent events also have this word called um uh, with replacement so if you guys can write that key phrase up there and here's what we're, with replacement means let's say your experiment is drawing cards twice okay so let's say you drew one card out and then you for the second draw you put that card back you replaced it on the second draw does it have does the first draw affect the probability of the second draw at all if you put the card back in no because your total is still 52 right so with replacement means that the, the second event is not going to be affected by the first event. So they're independent of each other. So that's going to be a key word. Um, so you'll notice that the intersection, the and, uh, is the symbol that we're working with now instead of or. And uh, to find it, instead of adding the probability, you multiply. So let's start off with the probability of the coin toss. So here it's saying a coin, a coin is tossed, a six-sided die is rolled. Find the probability of it landing on heads. Um, uh, sorry, of of landing on the head and so we're going to highlight the word and and rolling a three on the die. So we just discussed that these two events are independent of each other. So head and would be like that upside down that looks kind of like the end and 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 rolling a three. So what we need to know is what's the probability of a head times the probability of three. Okay, what when you guys flip a coin, what's the probability of you landing on a head? A half. So there are only two outcomes, two possible outcomes, right? What's the probability of rolling a three when you roll a die? A six. So when it's an and situation, we're going to multiply across fractions. So one twelfth is the probability of both a, a head and rolling a three at the same time. Okay, so cards again. A card is chosen at random from a deck of 52 cards. If it, it is then replaced, so here's the key word replaced. So replace automatically means it's independent of each other. Uh, yes, Mia, that's the correct summarization. And a second card is chosen. So once you guys put the card back, it's like a fresh, uh, fresh batch of cards again, deck of cards again. So it's independent of each other. What's the probability of a of choosing a jack and an eight? Okay, and so first draw, second draw. So uh, they're independent of each other. So you would say jack and eight. So probability of jack times probability of eight. What's the probability that a jack is going to get selected? Okay, four out of 52. And then what's the probability of eight being selected? Four out of 52 again. So multiply across, you guys get 16 out of whatever 52 times 52 is. But when, it, when you reduce it, you get one over 169. I do one more. I did do one more. Okay, so let's say you guys had a jar and it contained those marbles colors and a marble is chosen at random from the jar after replacing it. So if I drew it out and I put it back, now you guys are back to the same total. So this is with replacement. They're independent of each other. A second marble is chosen. What is the probability of choosing a green and so again, keyword and a yellow marble? So we're going to want the probability of green and yellow. 
So we'll need what the probability of green is times the probability of yellow. So when we are talking about uh, all these colors, we will need to know what the total number is. How many marbles are in the jar? 16, good. So how many of them are green? Five times how many of them are yellow? Six, good. 30 over 256, which reduces to 15 over 128. It takes a while to get used to, especially when we mix the and or the or problems together. And then there's a, one other discussion on what happens if they're like, what, what happens if I didn't replace it? Like if I didn't replace